Thank you so much for having me today. Um, as you said, my name is Mamta Patel Nagaraja, and I'm an engineer. And I thought I, what I would do is tell you my story. So when I was first invited to give a talk on a TEDx stage, I thought really hard about whether or not I would say yes. And that's because I just, I don't know, me, my story, who would be interested in that? Me on a stage telling, my, I just feel like the girl next door, the person who you've met numerous times and happened to be a success, or at least I like to think I'm a success. And so I thought about saying no, and then I thought about where I grew up, in small town, West Texas. Nobody came to tell me their stories. Nobody came to our school. Nobody comes and does a TEDx event in Glanzor, Texas. I would be shocked if any of you had even heard of this small town in West Texas. And so that's really what made me say yes. I thought, what if, especially with this invention called the World Wide Web, what if my story was that story for somebody? Somebody in middle America who doesn't have access to these wonderful people who can come to those schools and talk to them. What if I'm that person? What if they get on YouTube and they see my story and I change the course of their life, the way that certain people have changed the course of my life and have put me on a place where I can be invited to sit on the stage and have a bio like the one that you heard? What if I'm that person? So as I said, I grew up in a small town and I'm a product of a public school education. Um, to give you an idea, my high school was fine, but my junior high, let's see, I saw my first gun when I was an eighth grader. And the sad thing is, it was kind of normal at that school, so normal that I didn't even go home and tell my parents. If my son, who's really little right now, came home in a few years and told me he saw a gun at school, I'd be up in arms about it. I mean, there would be some major PTA sessions going on. And yet, I didn't even go home and tell my parents. Um, that's just the kind of school that I had gone to. But I remember that same school probably provided the first person who I can look back and think she changed my life. And that was my seventh grade speech teacher. I took it for a semester, and Mrs. Sakinius, she took an extra bit of care for me. I think all teachers should care about their students, but this one, I would say, was more like a mentor. And I was painfully shy. I mean, prior to the age of 12, there's no way I would be up here on this stage. Absolutely not, had Mrs. Sakinius not intervened, and this, this is why. So she put me in front of the classroom every day, and I was the only one she did this to, by the way. <laughs> the only person. And she said, tell me what you did last night. And so she, that's literally what would come out. She would come up from the back of the classroom, tell me, repeat what you just said, and punch me in the diaphragm. And so it would come out like this. I ate dinner with my family, and she would walk back and say, that's what you sound like when I can hear you from the back of the classroom. And we did that every day until I could speak like this. Every day. And then she encouraged me to get the lead part in a play that the school was having. She put me in a place and built a skill for me that I used every single day. Every day in my professional life and every day in my personal life. And she probably has no idea, unless she happens to see this video on YouTube, she probably has no idea that she is the first person that I credit my success to outside of my family. Here, here to teachers. I say fast forward a couple years, and that same school provided me the woman who told me to go become an engineer. And she was my English teacher. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're that bad in English that your teacher <laughs> told you to go in a math and science-based career. Um, but Mrs. Atkins was more brilliant than I knew at that time, and I actually really loved English. I loved reading, I liked to write, um, I like to speak now. And she actually told me, no, the reason that I want you to go into engineering, or I think you should become an engineer, is not because you're good at math and science, but because you're good at English. And I tell every student that I talk to, make sure you do well in English, because somebody who can communicate, somebody who can write, is somebody who will stand out above the rest, especially in those technical fields. And she was absolutely brilliantly correct. Before her, and actually I didn't even know what engineering was. When she told me to become an engineer, I thought, okay, I'll go become an engineer. I thought engineers drove trains. And that's really what I thought they did. <laughs> I thought that's a horrible field for you to tell me to go into. But eventually I learned. I mean, I'd have to say it was my junior year in college after two and a half years of um, going through an engineering education that I really figured out what engineering was. And it was through co-oping at NASA that I figured out what it was. But if had it not been for Mrs. Atkins, I have no idea if I would have known 
that that's the path I should be on, or if I wanted to go on it, turns out that he was right. I did really well in it, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So once again, to our teachers. Fast forward a few more years, and in my high school, the last person I can think of that put me on this path, changed the course of my life to get me to where I am today, is my math teacher, and has nothing to do with math. I, by then, I already loved math. She didn't need to convince me that math was awesome. I already, I already liked math. But what she did, I think, is above and beyond the call of duty of any teacher, to me at least. So the, the story goes, um, it was the first period of my senior year, and this was kind of, you know, and nobody really cared about school anymore. We were all talking about what colleges we were going to go to and who got which scholarship, and that was the, the course of the conversation in the room. And I remember this young man, Wade, um, I walked in the classroom and he said, hey, Mumta, did you, and he's kind of one of those guys who talk like this, hey, Mumta, did you apply for this uh, scholarship? And I was like, no, no, wait, I, I didn't get that application. I didn't get in the mail. Oh, okay. And he went about his way and continued talking to his friends. And I was getting my homework out to turn it in for the day and probably checking over my homework because that's what I did. I was very studious in school. And the bell had not rung yet, and Mrs. Bean, walked over to Wade and said, hey, Wade, can I see that piece of paper? I saw her reading it, paid no attention to her after that. Only thing I remember is she walked out of the classroom and came back with two pieces of paper. She handed Wade back his, and she came up to me and she said, Mumta, this is an application for a full scholarship to Texas A&M. I'm going to give it to you. It is due tomorrow. <laughs> you need to go home, write these essays, and beg your dad to go to the post office and overnight your application. Post office closes at 4.30. School gets out at 3. There wasn't much time to make this happen. But she looked me in the eye again and said, you have to do it. I think you could get this scholarship. I do what my teachers tell me to do. That's just the kind of person I am. Went home, wrote my essays, printed them out. Thank goodness my parents had a computer, and or had gotten us a computer. And I begged my dad, and you have to I guess I should probably put in here that money was hard to come by. Um, my parents are, you know, they came from India. Um, and as you know, many of the immigrant stories from India turn out to be very good. And, and theirs is one of those extremely positive stories. Um, they had a hard life in India. They worked really, really hard in America. Um, but their children, I think, were, were the, um, the answer to their prayers, I guess, is the way my dad has said it. That when they looked at us, they realized it was all worth it. And I'd have to say all five of us are quite successful. And I'm, I'm more than um, positive to say that they're the reason why we are so successful. So money wasn't easy to come by. And overnighting a package was like $15, $20. And I mean, was it really worth it? Begged my dad. I mean, begged him. It took about 30 seconds for him to go, for a full ride? OK, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably the best gamble he made because that $15, $20 turned into a full ride scholarship to Texas A&M. And I would have not gotten that application had Mrs. Bean not made a copy. First of all, listen to the conversation happening in her classroom. Before the bell rang, had nothing to do with homework or math. Went and made a copy of it, told me what to do, and then I listened to her. And my dad overnighted it for me, and I got the, got the scholarship. That's, to me, the power one person can have on your life. Completely changed the course of what I did. And of course, I can't even imagine how thankful my parents were for that gamble. Um, and we have five children in our family. Three were in college, at the, four were in college at the same time. So I'm sure that that was just, um, that was probably the best gift they could have gotten at that time in life. So that's, to me, the power of what one person can do. So if you've never had a story in your life that has proven to you what one person can do, what you can do for one person, I hope that one of those will prove to you that you never know when you might be talking to the person who cures cancer, or the person who becomes the next astronaut, or the person who saves somebody's life. You never know when that person will be before you, or maybe the next person who gets invited to sit on a TEDx stage and thanks you publicly and says that you're the reason for her success. So I really, for me, I really encourage you to remember that when the next student asks you what you do, or your child asks you to come to school and tell the classroom what you do, because you just never know when you could be that one person. Thank you so much. <laughs>